Association and certainly Shark Fin Shears, who, by the way, before we go any further, I want to thank them for this opportunity, not only to speak with you, but to give you a full day of phenomenal education. So I'm here with my friend Leslie Perry from the Professional Beauty Association, and I'm so excited to have an opportunity to work with you. Now, I know that most of my audience is student-based, I believe. So most of my material is student-based, but please know, if you're sitting uh, watching your screen and you've been a hairdresser for 40 years, this is great material for you. And sometimes I think we all need a little reminder on what it takes to be the best you, on what it takes to get the most out of every day, and certainly on what it takes to be a part of this phenomenal industry, which we're all so lucky to be a part of. Now, with that said, uh, it's crazy times. I'm sure wherever you are, there's COVID. Uh, there's certainly COVID here. And if any of you are in California, God bless you. I'm glad your salons are finally open. And I know that uh, if you have an opportunity to talk to Leslie from the Professional Beauty Association, they've been very active lobbying to get these uh, state governments to, to help us out and, and put us back to work and take care of us. But knowing COVID is here and knowing that it's really not going to go anywhere, I'd like to first of all talk to you about how to navigate COVID and how to make it work for you. There's still a tremendous opportunity out there. As a matter of fact, we've actually come to a time in the beauty industry where our value is much higher because customers that haven't seen us for a while now understand even more so just how important we are and how much they miss us, how much they miss the personal touch, how much they miss having someone to talk to like us. I mean, all of us are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to working with people, and we all know how to read people well. So to navigate COVID, first of all, stay disciplined don't get this virus. Make sure you wash your hands, wear your mask, pay attention, and get good news. Don't just listen to the news. Make sure your news is reputable. Make sure it's worthy so that you have a pretty good feel for what's going on out there. Next, be careful with other people because some people are so scared they're not communicating as well as they normally would. So be the beauty professional that you are. We're all so good. We have an innate talent to read others. So read a guest. Do they look scared to death? Do they look not scared at all? So that you learn how to work with them and how to talk to them. One of the things I try to explain to all of them is we were raised on sanitation. Because if you're in beauty school, your first couple months are all about sanitation, getting rid of the germs. And I mean, every year, the flu season, most of us don't get the flu because we know how to wash our hands, how to be careful, how to pay attention, and how to take care of others without having germs affect us. So uh, I hope you'll take that to heart. Uh, if you can, grab a pencil and paper and take a few notes. Now, uh, Leslie and I conduct every year the greatest beauty program for students in the world, bar none. It's called the Beacon Program. I have been the facilitator of the Beacon Program for nearly 20 years, many, many years. Behind me, right over there, is my file cabinet. And in my file cabinet, I have hundreds of letters from previous students that have come through Beacon and talked about how Beacon changed their life and grew them, increased their network, got them to appreciate and understand NAHA, the Professional Beauty Association. So I'd like to encourage all of you, please apply for Beacon and try to spend a three-day powerhouse with all of us, very similar to today. It's all about business. It's all about education. It's all about the art. It's all about the craft, and it's wonderful. Now, Sharkfin has been kind enough to give us this time together. And I don't know if you're aware, but you know that one of you, one lucky listener, is going to receive over a thousand dollar toolkit, including incredible shark fin shears. So one of you, please stay on for the day and see if perhaps you're the winner. You get a bunch of stuff. I've got a few things written down that I could share with you. Um, you're going to get some stuff from Ergo. You're going to get some stuff from Andis, I believe. And by the way, while I'm on it, 
I want all of you to understand that you'll get a 20% discount on your purchases from Sharkfin as a result of spending the day today. Pivot Point Sharkfin will give you 20% off all hair, tripods, and holders. Ergo, which by the way, I've used for many years, it's Ergo tools are phenomenal. They're made just for us. You'll get 10% off your purchase with store registration. And Andis is offering a VIP 10% off for any order over $50. And lastly, Alkali, believe this, 55% off of any purchase, $50 or more. Just use the code Alkali, A-L-K-A-L-I. This is uh, such uh, an incredible offer for all of you. So now, as I begin, you'll get the sense of the fact that I talk very fast and I have a million things to share with you. One of the things that we do at the Beacon program that I'd like to share with all of you is, I open the program every year reading a letter called I Am Deserving. The reason I do is because all of us are in a career or embarking on a career where it's easy to be intimidated and it's easy to lose your self-worth and self-esteem uh, through a guest. Some guests are experts at intimidating us. So if you're taking notes, start right here. Write this down. No one can intimidate you without your permission. No one can intimidate you without your permission. Now, I can tell you that in growing up, I had a very troubled childhood. I had five sisters. I was the only boy. We were poor. We really had nothing. Thing. So all of us grew up with low self-worth, low self-esteem, uh, eating disorders, just everything you could imagine that comes with not feeling like you are deserving or worthy. When I found this letter on the internet many, many years ago, I made a copy of it and I had a friend of mine do it on calligraphy paper in calligraphy. I had five frames. I framed five of them and I gave it to all five sisters. And I said to my five sisters, let's all of us, every time we talk, read this out loud together. Now, I'd like to read it to you. I'm going to read one paragraph at a time and give you just a little bit of insight in the paragraph. And by the way, uh, if you'd like a copy of the I Am Deserving Letter, just contact Leslie, who's on here with us, and she'll make a point of getting it to you. And when you do get the letter, please make a couple copies of it and give it to some friends that you know really need it. I think Leslie just put up her email so you can see how you can email her. It's simple, Leslie at probeauty.org. Okay, so here is the letter. I am deserving. I deserve all good, not some, not a little bit, but all good. I now move past all negative restricting thoughts. I release and let go of the limitations of my parents. I love them and I go beyond them. I am not their negative opinions nor their limiting beliefs. I am not bound by any of the fears or prejudices of the current society I live in. I no longer identify with limitations of any kind. Now, what does the first paragraph mean to me? It means, first of all, that I have to remind myself I am deserving and I do deserve all good, okay? Next, I have to be careful that I'll move past all negative restricting thoughts. Many times I'm the one that tells me I'm not worthy. I can't do it. You know, when I was in beauty school and it was a time to do an updo, everybody'd have their updo done in 15 minutes. I would have to take my mannequin home and work on the updo all night long just to come back with a terrible updo. I've never been great at doing here, but you know what? Talent is very overrated. And if you're nice and you're fair and you're fun and you're good, you'll be busy. And people, if you do a bad haircut, if they like you enough, they'll stay with you until you get good, okay? Next, I release and go beyond the limitations of my parents. Well, you know why? Because if I listened to my parents, I'd never really be anything. I had to get away from that thinking and realize that I can create a Geno Stampora that can be happy and be successful and get beyond all the obstacles and things that I had to put up with. Next, I'm not bound by any of the fears or prejudices of the current society I, li I live in. You must understand that all people matter. All people have value, 
Treat every person like the most important person in the world. Everyone has a place. And it's important that we're not so quick to judge. A lot of artists are very quick to judge. Don't judge people. Judge yourself and let, let God judge them. But don't worry about it. And then lastly, I no longer identify with limitations of any kind. You see, the greatest limits that are on you, you've created. We put limits on ourselves. We think we know ourselves and we tell ourselves what we can and can't do and what we do and don't have and how talented we are or aren't. But the fact of the matter is, you don't know you. You'll never know you. You are an evolution. We are all evolving and changing all the time. So my goodness, there's going to be people out there that are going to put limitations on you. Don't be one of them. Take down the limits and live limitless. Make today matter. Okay? The second paragraph. In my mind, I have total freedom. I now move into a new space of consciousness where I am willing to see myself differently. I am willing to create new thoughts about myself and my life. My new thinking becomes new experiences. Well, here's what it's about. If I give my mind total freedom, I do move into a new space where I see myself differently. I see myself as someone who has value and someone who has something to offer. And I can create new thoughts about myself in my life and realize it doesn't matter if I weigh 500 pounds or 50 pounds, if I'm seven foot tall or, or three foot nine. What matters is how I feel about me and what's in my heart and what I'm willing to share and give to others, what I'm willing to give to my clients. And then you find your new thinking becomes new experiences. This is what it's all about. You see, a lot of people might look at this and think, does this really matter? course it matters. You know what? The greatest enemy of learning is knowing. So don't ever think you know. Try to build an opportunity where there's always something to learn. Always seek knowledge. Always seek newness. You know the old saying, self-confidence is the product of knowledge. Well, what that saying is telling you is if there's anything that you lack confidence in, the reality is you just don't know enough about it. And if you learn more and become an expert, it would make a drastic difference in who you are, and what you do, and what you become. The third paragraph. I now prosper in a number of ways. The totality of possibilities lie before me. I deserve life, a good life. I deserve love, an abundance of love. I deserve good health. I deserve to live in comfort and prosper. I deserve the freedom to be all that I can be. The universe is more than willing to manifest my new beliefs, and I accept this new abundant life with joy, pleasure, and gratitude. For I am deserving. I accept that. I know it to be true, and so it is. Let me tell you. Read this to yourself a couple times a day, and watch what muscles and discipline you develop, and watch how you begin to see yourself in such a different way. Because here's what I believe as an educator, and those of you that know me know that I've been educating the beauty industry for nearly 40 years. I've been all over the world as an educator. I've received all the awards I could possibly receive, except for one, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the North American Hairstyling Awards. And I always tell them I don't want it because I'm afraid when you get that award, um, soon after you probably die. And I don't want to die because I have a lot to offer and a, and a lot to share. So with that said, let's talk about the nine steps to mastering your career. And let's see if I can't give you a verbal toolkit that's a hundred times greater than the thousand dollar toolkit that one of you are going to win. So this toolkit is for all of you. Now, please contact Leslie at probeauty.org. Get involved with the Professional Beauty Association. And please, if you're a student, apply for Beacon. I'd love to see you in person. Here are the nine steps to mastering your career. Number one, always be learning. Always be learning. I don't know if you can see behind me. I'm in my office here in Virginia. You'll see behind me a thousand books. I have read every book that's behind me probably three or four times. And I continue to read constantly because you can't compete with people 
who read. So you should be looking at how could you always be learning? I read Modern Salon, American Salon, Salon Today, Launchpad Magazine, cover to cover every single month. I want to know everything about my industry. I want to become a master of beauty. And I hope that you do too, because I'll tell you what happens when you're a master. I am a master educator and I know it. And you know what? I never worry about work. I never worry about money. I never worry about friends. I never worry about the feeling within knowing that I give my all all the time. So please take the time to practice learning something new every single day. Number two, make sure you shine. People that shine have a great advantage in our industry. Now, what does it mean to shine? You have to look positive. You have to look happy. You have to look sincere and courteous. You have to look healthy. Those are all part of nonverbal communication. I'll tell you what I do. I smile and say hello to everyone because everyone matters to me. But people tell me sometimes, you shine. How, how do you do that? How do I do it? I practice it. I practice it every day. I mean, in front of me is, a, is another giant bookcase, and there's probably five or six books in there about how to develop a personality, how to develop charisma. As a matter of fact, if you'd like a copy of my student book list, contact Leslie, and we'll get a copy to you so that you too can learn how to shine. Number three, give 100%. Now, this is so important. Uh, on my bulletin board, just up here to my right, I have a pink post-it. And on it, it says, all things good. I believe it's so important to give 100%. Now, I know that all of you do, but I want to give you an idea. What might differentiate you and me is that I give 100%, 100% of the time. I let nothing get in the way of us. I, get, I let nothing get in the way of my mission. As a matter of fact, here's what I've learned over my many years. Things that you do that you don't give 100% to, you probably shouldn't have done anyway. Now, those of you that are in beauty school, let's talk for a minute. I remember beauty school. I remember like it was yesterday. I remember the first month in beauty school. I loved it. I went every day. I was never late. I was never tired. I was never sick. Oh, my God, I couldn't wait to be there, to be with everybody, to be with all the girls, to, to have all the fun. And I'll tell you, I never went to beauty school to be a hairdresser. I walked into beauty school one day to get my hair cut because I wanted to meet all the girls in beauty school. And while I was in there getting my hair cut, the registrar, Bill Kennedy, walked over and said, oh, it's so nice to see a young man here in the clinic. What's your name? And I said, Gino. He said, well, it's nice to meet you, Gino. And he walked away and then he turned around and he said, did you say Gino? And I said, I did. And he said, do you know that you can be a success in the beauty industry just with that name? Well, I got out in the car to drive home and I thought, this is a sign. I should go back and sign up for beauty school. But I have to tell you, by the second month in beauty school, I didn't think my instructors were that smart. I didn't think beauty school was that much fun. By my fifth month in beauty school, I didn't like it at all. And by my sixth month, I was counting the hours and couldn't wait to get out. And if somebody said, how's beauty school? I said, 150 hours and I'm out of here. Listen, some of you should write a note to your instructor and say, thank you for taking the time to teach me. Please help me be the best I can be. What do I have to do? Get in the habit of writing notes and asking them. I'll talk about it more in the future. Okay. Number four, personal marketing. This is so important because this is a career where I believe marketing is a 365 day a year, 24 hour a day campaign. You have to market all the time. You have to meet people, you have to talk to them, tell them what you do, and you have to be prepared. Now, one of the things that I do is I teach dialogue because I'm a master at Beauty Dialogue. As a matter of fact, if you're interested, go on my website, website genostampora.com, and look at some of the things I offer people, including uh, 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 downloads and a series of CDs all on dialogue, the best-selling CDs in the beauty industry, CDs that Modern Salon has said it's the best tools a stylist could have. Here's what I say when people ask me what I do for a living. I say, I'm so glad you asked. I'm a hair image professional. I have the privilege of working with the greatest team of professionals at a wonderful salon called Geno's. I'd like to give you a card. I'd love for you to come by. There's one thing you'll find different about our salon. 
we're so passionate, you'll leave with that passion. Thank you for asking. Isn't that better than saying, oh, yeah, I do hair. Or, well, I'm going to be doing hair soon. And I'll tell you, ask people to get you busy. Okay? Number five, we're right in there. Ask people for help. Now, here's why. Most of us that are artists, we're, we, we are not good at asking. We're not good at asking people for help. We're not good at asking people to assist us. And you've got to develop that habit. I, Leslie, Willie, Randy from Sharkfin, many of the people you're going to see this afternoon on this incredible program, we are all about sharing and, and teaching and learning and helping others and getting people to walk in our footsteps, to, to have a, a worthy career, to be outstanding representation of this great industry. Ask us for help. Ask us to help you do what you need. And at the same time, when you think of personal marketing, ask your partner, ask your mom and dad, ask your sisters and brothers, ask your friends to begin to send you people, even in the clinic. Get in the habit of asking for help and get people to help you conquer your obstacles and achieve your goals. That's what it's all about. Number six, know your dialogue. You have to know your dialogue. You have to know how to talk to people. You have to know how to sell beauty. You see, a lot of people, they never practice dialogue. You have to practice speaking. Just because you can talk doesn't mean you're a great communicator. How do you put value in your words? How do you put value in getting people to understand that they could confide in you, they could trust you? How do you build trust? That's all in the words you choose to use. And many words are the greatest words you can use. Many, many years ago, there was an incredible band called the Beatles. They actually still are an incredible band called the Beatles. I love the Beatles because the Beatles were all about love. All you need is love. Do you know that George Harrison, the guitar player for the Beatles, when it was time to marry his wife, he just sat her down and played her a song called If Not For You by Bob Dylan. And when the song was over, he said, I realized I had no words that could compare with these words, but that's how I feel about you. Will you marry me? Now, something all of us need to do is practice dialogue, say things the best that they could be said, and learn how to add value to your words, okay? By the way, value, it's very simply the difference between what a customer gets and the difference between what a customer expects. And our job in every aspect, just like my job with all of you today, is to exceed your expectations. At one point, I want you to say, wow, that was perfect, just what I needed. Let's move on to the next level. Are you with me? Okay. Number seven, have faith, confidence, and belief. Have faith. Have faith in your industry. We are the greatest industry that ever existed. Let me just share with you quickly. We're the only industry that does not discriminate against anyone for any reason. Everyone is accepted in the beauty industry. Okay? You have to have faith in that. Faith in the fact that there is a place for you in our industry. You have to have confidence. You have to have confidence in yourself. You have to have confidence in the people around you. You have to build a great support system. As I mentioned earlier, self-confidence is the product of knowledge. So sometimes do we need to pretend? Of course we do. I mean, every great beauty professional I know talks all the time about how many times they pretended that they knew until finally they knew. And then lastly, you have to have belief. You have to have belief in our country. We will conquer COVID. We'll, we have for six and a half thousand years of recorded history conquered everything. So that will be conquered. And you have to have belief in the fact that you have everything you need to be everything you want to be. It's already inside you. Do you know the word education is derived from a Latin word called deduke? And the word deduke means to bring out of. I feel that my job today for our next few minutes is for me to help bring out of you what it is that you are and what it is that you do best and get you to realize that we need you. Our industry needs you and we need you to be the best that you can be. Now, lastly, if you don't have belief in yourself, borrow mine. 
I need you to know that if there's any way I could be here on this screen talking to you, if there's any way I could travel the world and talk to beauty professionals, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that you can do it too. So rise up and become, become something great. Number eight, become a great communicator. Now, this is very difficult because as I said earlier, people think that they can communicate uh, because they can talk. However, there's a lot to being a great communicator. There's three forms of communication, visual, vocal, and verbal. So visual communication, how do you want to be perceived? What are you wearing? What kind of clothes do you wear? What kind of jewelry do you wear? Because that's how you're being perceived by others, whether it's fair or not. Do you look happy and friendly and courteous? Do you look like you care? Do you look like you're interested? Do you look like you have empathy? You know, I often tell the story about if ever you've been in any city that you are close to or in, and you get lost, and you need to get directions, and you see a guy up the road, and you pull up the road to ask the guy for directions, you stop and you look at him, and you say, don't ask him. He doesn't know. And then you drive further looking for someone else. There are people that look like they know. We need to be those kind of people. When it comes to beauty, I look like I know, and I know that I know. I can tell you that all of my neighbors in my little town of Percival, Virginia, all of my friends, they all know me as the beauty expert. That's what I want you to be known as, the beauty expert in your house, in your town, in your area with your friends. Now, there's three tremendous rules to becoming a great communicator. Number one, it's not what you say that matters, it's what people hear. So try to learn what people heard you say. Sometimes it comes across differently. We say it with a thinking in our mind, but they're not thinking like we do, so they hear it differently. If any of you have little children, you know that the, anytime you have to talk to them, you say, what did I just tell you? Because we wanna know from them right out of their mouths that they heard what we said. Well, in a nice way, ask others when you're communicating what I just shared with you. What does that mean in, in your words? So it's not what you say that matters, it's what people hear. Number two, it's not what you think that matters, it's what people understand. Now this is so important to us because we are beauty professionals. So we think differently about the beauty world actually than customers do. So we can't talk to them based on our thinking. I mean, I haven't paid for a haircut, a color, or, or products in 40 years, you know, sometimes I forget the value of those things. I mean, I have friends that take care of me, but customers do pay. So the key talking to anyone is to look at them, read them, and talk to them based on their level of understanding. You see, if somebody's buying a store-bought shampoo, they've been convinced by a television set that that's a good product. As a beauty professional, we have to find a way to get them to understand that there's a better product and we know what it is and we'll share it with them. Now, I'll just with that said, I'll share with you some of the dialogue that you can get on my downloads and on my CDs is when you talk to people about products to explain to them that we have access to every product in the world in our salon and we use what we believe to be the best products that you should be using at home. I believe that says it all. Okay, number three, it's not what you write that matters. It's what people read. Now, if you'd like to take an immediate crash course on how to be a great writer, I want you to start writing notes more often. I write notes every week to people. I believe the key to the public's heart is through the mail. So I write notes to people all the time. I write it seeing them reading it. How do I want them to feel? How do I want them to act? What might I want them to do? So I write it with them in mind pertaining to, I want them to get my card and say, oh wow, a card from Gino. I wonder what's in it. So learn how to write with the other person reading in mind and make sure you use the best words you could possibly use. You know what, it's an honor to be here with all of you today. I hope you're writing some of this down because this is absolutely priceless material. 
it will take you to a place that you've never been before. So please, and by the way, if you have any questions, just get on and you can field them to Leslie and Leslie will get them to me and we'll answer your questions and thoughts. I mean, we're both experts at that. So if you have any questions or you'd like to chat, you know, put it on and we'll, uh, we'll see what we could do. Okay, number nine, give people a service story. Now, why? Well, you know what? Even in the clinic, when you're working on a client, if you give them a great story about you, which by the way, you might have to make it up. You might have to pretend you're something that you're not. It's okay. People have done it for millions of years. Make it up and make it something good. Tell them a great story about you. Remember when I said all things good? I'll tell you what I do with guests, clients, neighbors, and friends. I only share what's good. If it's not good, I'm not going to share it with others. I don't want to bring them down. I don't want them to feel differently about me. I want them to feel happy having seen me, happy having talked to me. So practice all things good. And that alone will give you a bit of a service story. People come back because you know why? No one can compete with the way you make a customer feel. You see, everyone can learn how to do a great haircut, a great color, a great perm, great texture. Everyone can learn, but no one can compete with feelings. No one can compete with the way you make your customer feel. When I had my beautiful salon flashback in Georgetown, I had about 30 hairdressers that were in the salon with me, and I was the worst of the 30, yet I was the busiest. You know why? Because you can't compete with the way you make somebody feel. That's why. And if they wanted to get a great haircut, I'd give them to Ronnie because he did the best haircuts in the world. So what is your service story? What's your story? What about you makes a difference? What about you matters? What about you do you want a guest or a client to know? And I'll tell you, if it's worth thinking about, it's worth writing down. Why not have a script? Have a script for who you are. Have a script for what you do. Have a script for what you're going to share with your guests. Have a script for selling products. You see, people think sometimes selling is so hard. Really, it's not. I mean, if you're an artist, you're actually a natural born salesperson. But here's what you need to understand. Selling is a transfer of belief. Now, we've spent nearly 45 minutes together. My goodness, my time is, is almost up. How many of you have decided that I love who we are, that I love what we do, that I love the beauty industry. Isn't it obvious? I mean, I am a hairdresser, head to toe, through and through. As a matter of fact, if, if I cut my finger, I don't bleed uh, blood. I bleed shampoo uh, because that's what I've had for so many years. So I want to ask you, can you have developed, keep that passion, that kind of passion? where you get people to understand that you are beauty through and through. They will love you for it, and it will make an incredible service story. Are you with me? Good, because I'm with you. Now, uh, are there any questions, Leslie, or anybody have anything they want to talk about? I don't see any questions yet, so it's Monday morning. I think everybody's getting into the flow, like me. <laughs> I understand, yes, and I, it's very different for you and I. I'm in Virginia on the East Coast, so it's... Uh, and I'm, I'm on not, the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, it's about 12.30, and Leslie's all the way on the other side where it's 9.30, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, wow. Leslie, you look beautiful early in the morning. I'm glad that I don't have to be on at 9.30. <laughs> you okay, look great well, as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to close with all of you uh, with just a few special messages. I live by quotes. I listen to and have quotes all the time. I have them all over my walls. I have, as a matter of fact, if you could see my office, I have every one of my mentors up on the wall. I'm looking directly at Walt Disney. Behind me is Vidal Sassoon. Right above me is Philip Wilson. I mean, just the room is filled with them because they help me stay inspired. Please understand if you've been inspired today that inspiration is very short-lived. And if you don't do something to stay inspired, it'll just go away. And that's why I read, why I study, why I surround myself with beautiful people like Leslie that bring out and expect to bring out the best in me. 
okay? So here's what I want you to think about for the rest of the day. You have greatness within you. I know you do. What are you doing to bring that greatness out, okay? Next, don't let your past predict your future because it doesn't. We can change today. We can change everything today. We can change the world today just by being different, thinking different, paying attention, having total respect for others. Don't let your past predict the future. Create a new future. Create a future you're proud of. Create a future where you can leave a legacy to your children and the important people in your life. Next, you are more than you think you are. You are. You're capable of so much more than you think. You know, they say we only use a very small percentage of our brain. I was never schooled. I mean, I never thought I was smart, but I have to tell you, you can learn how to be smart. You can school yourself. Next, please understand. I don't know what you're going through. I know we all go through crazy things. I have to tell you, being as old as I am, I'm scared to death of COVID-19. I'm afraid if I got it, I'd die. Uh, I had planned to go to Europe this summer, to Ireland and to Italy again and see my friends and family and cousins, and, uh, and I haven't been able to go. But here's what you need to know. The same wind blows on all of us. The same wind. If you're having obstacles right now, get beyond them. Get over them. Clarify them. It, it, be a solution-oriented thinker, not a problem-oriented thinker. Get rid of your problems. Next. We all need leaders. We all need coaches. We all need mentors. I want to close asking all of you, who are your mentors? Who's growing you? Who's taking you to that next level? Who is it that you need to get you there? Make sense? Ladies and gentlemen, I've loved our time together. I can't believe time goes by so quick when I'm here with you. I'm really getting comfortable beginning to love this Zoom thing uh, because it, it, it's so nice to be able to share thoughts and ideas with all of you. I hope you got some value out of our time together today. I hope you'll please contact Leslie at probeauty.org and get involved with the Professional Beauty Association. I've been since the day it started. And it has really been fruitful and wonderful, and they do so much for us. Please, if you can, apply for Beacon. I'd love to meet you in person. I can't wait to have you come and experience three days of bliss, of incredibleness. It will be wonderful, I promise, or my name's not Gino Stampora. Lastly, if you thought about a question that maybe you didn't want to ask, please feel free to email Leslie or I. I'm very simply Gino, G-E-N-O, at GinoStampora.com, and we would both love, thank you, Leslie, we, we would both love to hear from you. So in closing, I'd like to thank Sharkfin. Please, if you have an opportunity, email Randy at Sharkfin and thank him for giving you this incredible day of education. I want to thank all of the sponsors that have been kind enough to give one of you a $1,000 toolkit. I want to thank all of you for your time. I want to congratulate all of you for being in the greatest industry in all the world. God bless you all. Stay healthy. Thank you so much. I hope I'll see you soon. Thank you so much, you know, we really appreciate it. And I know we talked about yesterday that this is just a great way to start the day on a little positivity and a great positive note um, and to really open yourselves up to the education that you'll get today because, and I love, you know, that was something, a key learning for me through all of this has been that, um, that if you feel like you know everything, that's the detriment to all of your learning and you yeah. can't possibly learn if you think you know everything. Yeah. Um, so it we, looks like there might be a question in here. Oh, it says, thank you for your lecture. Thank you for the information. It was great. Um, and I'm just going to quick share a little bit more about the Beacon program. So you have the information, maybe. There we go. Um, so this is just a little bit more about Beacon, and you get to connect with mentors like Gino. You get to be inspired. You also get to attend the North American Hairstyling Awards that Gino mentioned, and is at the International Salon and Spa Expo in Long Beach, California. It'll be in March 13th through the 15th this year. Professional guidance and looking, you'll be meeting new mentors, and we get all kinds of great feedback from the program that people meet mentors there that carry with them through their entire careers and really elevate your career. And we have um, on our website, 
website and on our social media channels a story of one of the participants from last year in 2020 um, who got a job just recently because she was a Beacon student. The salon where she had applied actually didn't have any openings, but when they saw and heard that she was a Beacon student, they made room for her because they know what quality of student and um, cosmetologist that the Beacon students are. And so it really gave her a leg up in finding a, a job, even in starting her career in the industry. So just a little bit more information about Beacon, probeauty.org forward slash Beacon and hashtag PBA Beacon. So just wanted to make sure you have that information as Gino has mentioned, um, and myself, just if you would have any other questions, Leslie at Pro Beauty org. Enjoy the rest of your day. The Shark Fin and Friends 2.0. I know there's some amazing classes planned for the rest of your day. So I hope that you get to take it all in and really learn tons of great information today. Thank you again for being here. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we really hope to see you in person again soon.